and what is the pathologist limitation in this biopsy should also be communicated so it should be a communication with the surgical onco team with the pathological uh, with the histopathologist is very very important communication is a mainstay to you know most of this sensitive and specificity uh, goes high when we have a very good communication with the entire surgical onco team as uh, while doing the procedure we know it is uh, you know the patient is open under anesthesia so we have to give the diagnosis as fast within 20 minutes so all these details if it comes on the request from already available to the pathologist it helps to go forward with the diagnosis and it will prevent for further uh, unnecessary frozen sections so uh, for an understanding of the procedure of the purpose coupled with the specifics of the particular sample as i was discussing is very very important and understanding the clinical scenario like if it is a lymphoma if you are giving me a lymph node and you tell me okay it is uh, large it you know, the patient is having uh, the symptoms and then ldh is elevated so those points also helps us to know okay we may be dealing with a lymphoma case so some of this clinical history with the serum markers help us in our Uh, in clinching the diagnosis now what are the indications indications can be varied like we uh, nowadays uh, divide them into uh, main categories like staging of the cancer then uh, which can affect the parameters laid down in tnm staging like the tumor depth the tumor thickness the lymph node whether it is positive or not whether there is any uh, distant metastasis if you give me a nodule on the um, peritoneum if it is positive that also helps in the tnm staging then nodal sampling which we get in slnb for breast cases or endometrial carcinoma cases then parameters which are related to margin assessment so these are most of the uh, categories which we try to assess while doing the frozen section the main assessment as i have told starts with the macroscopic examination so first it is how the specimen on gross appears to us what is the dimension of the tumor so all this has to be recorded in the uh, format in our uh, pathology uh, report which we will be giving in the frozen section uh, reporting frozen section impacts impacts the primary diagnosis sometimes we help it helps to recognize a cancer from a non cancer so many times uh, we will see a small nodule has been sent it can be a tuberculosis it can be metastasis so that way it helps to recognize the neoplastic condition and the non neoplastic condition so that way it also helps the surgeon to convey to the patient about the treatment and it helps him to also decide on the treatment depending on the frozen section report also frozen section as i was telling a surprise frozen section like uh, we may not have uh, the surgeon may not have thought ki it is a malignancy but the nodule which is sent while uh, doing for frozen section while exploration can turn out to be positive so that way it helps the surgeon to decide way forward what will be the strategy for the treatment and then we need frozen section for identifying some of the tissue types which is required in some cases like for parathyroid tissue identification is very much needed when a patient presents with hypercalcemia and also while doing thyroid surgery so these are some of the salient points which we uh, address while doing frozen sections now the workflow for frozen section because we have to be uh, also very much particular about what we are seeing from which patient it has come so there should not be any confusion or there should be should not be any mix up of samples so the workflow for the frozen section is very very important so the in the pathology lab there is a method for accessing that means how we are receiving the sample so when it is coming to our lab so we will be having the patient name with the request form and we assign a number 
So we that is done at the receiving part of it uh, when we receive the specimen along with the form and labeling the frozen section. So we can label with the number because the permanent number will come when the all the samples come uh, for the patient. So we give the primary number for the patient for the first sample. A specimen needs part uh, as a unique identifier. So we will have the hospital HID, we will have the lab number. In our hospital, we give a frozen number as identifier. So it can be according to your institution, what the institution has fixed, whether it is a patient's uh, UHID number or whether it is a lab biopsy number or whether you want to give a separate frozen section number. It is up to the pathologist and also up to the institution what they follow. The information along with the requisition must be documented by the pathology, uh, by the pathological team. Pathologist is then presented with the micro macroscopic examination with the diagnostic differentials. So it can and also on the form it has to be explicitly stated why well, the frozen section is needed, the procedure for the operation and also what is required from the pathologist, whether you have sent it for a primary diagnosis or whether it has been sent for margins. So this has to be very clearly written on the request form. Along with that, the name of the surgeon, the phone number to whom it has to be communicated this all has to be there on the request form which helps us to facilitate the communication because you have only 20 minutes so every minute is important so all these parameters or these points should be written on the request form now there can be some uh, ambiguous scenario like nodal sampling unoriented specimens sometimes if you have the orientation suture present but on the form the orientation is not labeled like we know long is for lateral in the breast lumpectomy cases, but it may not be so in another lumpectomy or if you have sent me a glossectomy, the orientation suture is there, but it is not labeled. It is not mentioned on the request form. Then it unnecessarily, uh, you know, it creates more tension because I will be worried what suture is from when. Then again, we have to communicate to the surgeon that takes time. You get time gets wasted in this unwanted uh, communication uh, procedure. So all this should be properly written on the request form when it is sent for frozen section. And if the sections, if the lumpectomy or the specimen is not labeled, not written, then unnecessarily we will be doing uh, more sectioning. So that will be adding to the time of reporting. That will be adding to taking more sections which may not be required and in the long run, we may even lose tissue while doing frozen section because the frozen section we are doing cryofixation. We will lose the tissue for permanent paraffin uh, sectioning, which will help us to compile the report when uh, we see the paraffin sections. So every point is important in when filling up the request form or the requisition form while sending the sample to the pathologist to the histopathological lab. Now, once we receive the specimen, we will weigh it, measure it in all the three dimensions, that is length, width, and depth, then evaluate microscopically, and also select the area of importance so that we preserve more tissue. Because if, so this all needs meticulous examination, experience, because if you're not experienced enough to know from where this locks has to be taken, then unnecessarily you will be wasting on the tissue and your diagnosis may not help the surgeon. So frozen section needs meticulous examination of the specimen before doing uh, the grossing of it. And also we should know what is the lesion asked, what is the interest of the surgeon. So that will minimize the time and that will help to preserve the tissue. So this is important. So selection is important in order to demonstrate the desired pathology. Areas to be selected may include the mass lesion. As I was telling, it all depends on what the surgeon requests the pathologist and it should be mentioned on the form. Then relationship of the mass to a resection margin and the interface with the normal tissue. Now for many samples it is important to remove the adipose tissue because adipose tissue as i will tell you 
later i will show you this fat tissue is very difficult to freeze so we will try to remove the fat as far as possible when we get a sample of lymph node because lymph node comes with the adjacent fat so we trim off the fat surrounding the lymph node and give it uh, by serial slicing because if we take more of fat it may uh, give thick section and uh, it will like you know have um, uh, poor sectioning so it will uh, cause difficulty in reporting the lymph node status abundant adipose tissue can impact the quality of the frozen section but nowadays with the new machines i will uh, show you later this has been um, sorted out so with the new cryostat which uh, we have in our center for freezing of fat we have a different uh, temperature for the head of the chuck and we have a, a different temperature maintained for the cryo uh, you know the cryo uh, chamber so that way it helps so modern this issue has been taken care of in the modern cryostat equipment this um, with the new equipments we it can be we can take better sections nowadays now sectioning i was i was telling the frozen section needs expertise needs experience so you need to know where the sections has to be taken from how the sections has to be taken whether you have to take the entire uh, tissue or whether you have to orient it vertically and how like whether it should be embedded like cyst wall so this knowing knowledge of taking the section positioning the section is very important to give the diagnosis because that will give you proper um, sections proper images on microscopy which aids in the diagnosis so the orientation of the sections and the taking of the sections whether it is shaved it is perpendicular or it is cyst like helps in giving better sectioning and helps in the diagnosis for example flat structure needs to be oriented on the edge in order to see the margin suppose we get peritoneal nodule so you will get fat you will get the nodule so you have to cut across the nodule perpendicularly and the cutting should be facing you that means the cutting uh, edge of the tissue which you have cut with the knife should be embedded should be facing the technician should be facing while we are embedding it on the frozen section so that uh, my surface we will be able to examine on the microscopy and tell you whether those nodules were metastatic or not but if we take a shaved then we will get only the fat part of the um, peritoneal lining wall so that will not uh, many a times help us in giving the diagnosis after that the tissues are embedded in optimum cutting temperature mounting media which is a clear viscous liquid at room temperature but can become solid when we freeze it so these are some of the processes in selection uh, of uh, frozen sectioning process now the procedure when tissues are embedded in optimum cutting temperature mounting medium which as i was telling is a very uh, clear viscous fluid then we solidify it at minus 20 so now this also has different temperature for different tissues suppose if it is fat we need more temperature and if it is a lymph node we will need lesser temperature like for fat we will freeze it at minus 26 to minus 28 or minus 29 uh, we can go up to but if it is lymph node if it is more cellular we try to maintain the temperature uh, between minus 18 to minus 20 so you have to institution wise and your equipment wise the temperature has to be standardized so as you cut as you take the sections depending on the clarity of the sections and how good the sections are coming you document it and you put it in your sop so a tissue can be manipulated and reoriented before fixing but once it becomes fix fixed we cannot move the tissue so before placing it on the chuck we have to be very important how we place the tissue on the chuck so you need experienced technician also who will uh, do as the pathologist tells that this is how you have to orient it we tell it tell him and we stand by the 
technician and show him okay this is how we want the tissue to be embedded so we don't lose on the diagnostic part of it now freezing helps us to make a cryo mold uh, with the application of the uh, freezing media the oct is then placed over uh, like on the tissue on the metal platform and it is left left to freeze so that it becomes a solid uh, block like um, on um, you know when we feel it is very solid because if it is not solid we will not be able to cut if it is soft the tissue may come off from that metal plate so it has to be properly blocked properly solidified and blocked on the uh, chucks which are available and procured within uh, with the cryostat itself in general frozen tissue without this media will adhere to cold metal and cannot be repositioned it is important to wait until the tissue and this media are completely frozen using either method you can use a metal uh, weight on it or you can leave it it depends on what equipment you are choosing in completely frozen tissue can be very difficult to cut you may not be able to cut it and it will separate out from the base so this will this faulty procedure which will result taking more times it will cause delay now just to show this is a sample we received an slnb you can see this is a fat tissue which has lymph nodes so macroscopically we take the size of it then we start palpating for the nodes we have retrieved two nodes you can see that we have trimmed all the fat and this is two lymph nodes which we have retrieved this is a you no know, bigger node which we have cut serially in 2 mm thickness this is a longer node which we also have sliced in 2 mm thickness so that we do not miss any micromets we do 2 mm thickness and cut nine sections from each of this so that we don't miss any micromets or any small foci of metastasis for slnb cases this is what i was mentioning before this is the cassette on which we bring the tissue from the grossing room this is a lymph node which we have cut and this is the surface of the cutting uh, surface of the lymph node now we have placed it on the chuck this is the media which we are pouring here so once we pour the media you can see we keep in the freezing cryostat chamber it starts freezing it becomes hard like this and it will form a cryo mold so preparing tissue of the cryo mold mold is oct is covered on the chuck and once the block is completely frozen the metal base of the chuck is mounted on the cryostat it is best to keep long strips perpendicular to the blade and as folds occur in the plane of the knife it minimizes the plane of the tissue being cut most of the sections are cut on 4 to 6 microns but there is an exception if it 4 to 6 microns are for fat for margins but if it is lymph node which is more cellular if you cut thick it will be very difficult to give proper uh, diagnosis so for lymph node we cut it in very uh, thinner sections like 2 to 3 microns cut sections should be mounted on a warm slide on the room temperature slides and uh, on that we will take the sections then according to the protocol or according to how the pathologist is comfortable with the staining we can do hematoxylin eosin stain or we can do tol tolerant blue stain also but hematoxylin and eosin is preferred because you can see both the nucleus and the cytoplasmic stain then it is dehydrated with xylene or xylene substitutes covered with a uh, dpx which is an adhesive and mounted with cover slip and then given for examination at that entire during the entire process it is very much important to maintain the specimen identification and block identification because at the same time you may get two three cases coming to the lab so if you don't identify each case you may mix up so this is very very important is first thing is identify the patient identify the number even before seeing the slide first thing is see the request from identify the number and then start seeing the slides because there should not be any mismatch so this is a cryostat i was uh, talking about this is a new model uh, so here as i was telling you you can see this is a cryostat chamber 
these are the chucks on which we place the tissue as you can see we have placed the tissue and uh, we have kept for making the mold then this is what i was telling this is the head temperature there is a new uh, mechanism in the uh, latest cryostat which they have devised so for this uh, margins we can use a temperature of about minus 24 and the head because uh, it is very fatty tissue we want it to freeze faster and freeze better so for that we can even control this head chamber temperature which was not there in the previous machines so this helps us to <coughs> uh, freeze the fat tissue better so that it gives us better sectioning and it does not tear off we do not have a shearing effect when the technician is cutting so this is an added advantage so this is the whole chamber temperature you can see is minus 24 and this head temperature is minus 34 so when we are cutting fat for the margins of bcs for the breast cases this additionally helps us to freeze the fat faster and give us better sections So this is how we take the sections. You can see this is the mold, and this is placed on this uh, mold uh, chamber. This is the blade, and this is the plate. And here you can see blade for cutting. This is how they cut the sections. This is a video. I'll just play how we cut the sections on Frozen. He's putting the medium to uh, make the cryo mold. So we wait for the cryo mold to freeze. Once it freezes, it becomes white. We close the chamber cover so that the temperature is maintained and it freezes fast. Because optimum freezing is required. Otherwise, we will not be able to cut. We will not get thin sections. And sometimes even the sections tissue can come out from the chunks while cutting. So now the chuck is adequately fixed. We are checking for the hardness. So the mold has been made and we place it on the chuck to cut the mold and give us uh, and do the sectioning so that we can stain and see the sections. This is a rotatory microtome which is uh, there in frozen section machine which helps us to cut the section so that is a tissue which is going up and down and you can see the blade uh, with which it is being trimmed so we trim and make it uniform so that we can get good sections so there is no fold no uh, shear marks so now he is taking that sections very thin two micron sections, two to three micron sections. This we are taking out on the slide. The slides are on room temperature, so it it really sticks on the slide.
So now, <clears throat> after uh, seeing the procedure, how we do the frozen section, now I just come back to the selection of the tissue. This is a sample of a glossectomy. So this is a gross examination. Thus, we can, you can see the orientation suture placed on the specimen. So here we can see it is little uh, looking at this uh, whitish areas are closer to the uh, resection margin, one of the resection margin. So we communicate to the surgeon. On cutting, we can see this is a tumor. As we communicated, the surgeon also has communicated to us that he also felt this posterior inferiorly was closed. So he had already sent another separately, um, uh, you know, resected additional margin. So that we freeze. This is a separately sent uh, posterior margin from that area which looked close. And this is the microscopy. You can see this is the inked margin and there is no tumor. This is a normal salivary gland. So this way it helps us to tell, okay, the margin is free. So while reporting the frozen sections, the site to be evaluated uh, by trained pathologist is very, very important. And also the communication with the surgeon is, uh, it helps in the diagnosis. Deeper sections, if needed, should be performed, which helps in improving the quality of the staining helps to know if there is any smaller atypical foci or not. Verbal report has to be told to the surgeon and documented to whom it has been told and along with the time and date. So this is one more case where uh, we have, this was for the diagnosis of the tumor. This was a 24 year old female um, Sent for ovarian, uh, sent for diagnosis. This was an ovarian mass. On cut open, we can see a solid nodular grayish yellow tumor. This is the frozen section slides which we saw. So why I was telling every uh, um, information is important on the request form is this was a 24 year female with ovarian mass whose LDH was elevated. And here we can see this cells in nests and cords with lymphoid cells in between. So for us, uh, it looked like it could be a germ cell tumor, possibly a dysgerminoma. So this age with LDH also helps us to confirm our diagnosis. And obviously when you communicate with the surgeon, when uh, this was uh, Sir's case, so when we spoke over the phone, Sir was also thinking that it is uh, this germinoma. So that helped us to come to the diagnosis because frozen section slides are not as well preserved as the paraffin section. So every bit of information is important for us to give the diagnosis within the specified time. So next, as we were telling, how frozen section helps in staging. So this was an endometrial carcinoma. You can see the growth. This is the full thickness. This is the tumor. This is the underlying myometrium. So we can see it is about going to 50% on the macroscopy. So this is a microscopy uh, we have taken. You can see this dark areas, this are the tumor and we can see a medium sized vessel. So this gives us a clue. If the tumor clusters go beyond this vessel wall, then it is more than 50% myometrial invasion if we cannot make it straightforward on the slide. Here it was uh, like just at 50%. So we have communicated that it is about a 50%, but we will take more sections on permanent to see whether it is more than 50% or not. So that way, whether it is a one stage 1A or 1B, it will help us to uh, assess and tell the surgeon. This, the lymph node was negative. So the tat and frozen section reporting is very important. We have to uh, like, you know, tell the surgeon um, the report within a short time, within 20 minutes. Reporting issues uh, uh, states like we have to tell the identification of the patient. We have to uh, know to whom we are reporting and what time and also whether if it is a, um, not the surgeon whom you usually report to, if you are reporting 
the to a new surgeon if i telling a report to someone new you have to also ask him whether the report you have communicated what he has heard like whether it's positive margin or negative margin for that you have to be very sure so the checklist in the item also requires that pathologist always speaks to the surgeon and as a methodology the report should be sent and should be acknowledged by the surgical onco team now coming to the margins so as we know we are most of the cases nowadays for breast carcinoma are coming as breast conservation surgery specimens bcs specimens we uh, doing mastectomy is becoming less and less nowadays because it has seen the prognosis or the result of mastectomy or bcs doesn't make doesn't change the mode of the treatment or uh, bcs is giving uh, like the results are same nearly in mastectomy and bcs but bcs it helps to preserve the breast tissue it helps to uh, and the result is same in both so nowadays it is always uh, you conserve more and more tissue so bcs is coming into uh, practice in most of the uh, surgical onco team who does breast carcinoma uh, treatment so here also first the specimen has to be evaluated grossly on macroscopy it has to be um, seen that the orientation sutures are there then we describe the gross and the microscopic status of the margins and then we report the distance of the margins now what is the positive and the negative margin for breast carcinomas it is told if the ink is on the surgeon's knife only then it is positive otherwise it is negative and suppose there is a thin fascia when there is a pectoralis uh, when uh, muscle is removed even that if you have a thin fascia between the tumor and the muscle that is adequate for telling it to be negative so margin assessment is very very important for bcs on frozen section and that also helps to know how uh, and uh, how the patient will prog- uh, like you know what will be the prognosis in the long run because bcs with free margin is one of the best prognosticators for breast carcinomas now positive margin sometimes is wrongly interpreted if there is an lvi on the margin so lvi on the margin is not considered as a positive margin so uh, a pathologist should always tell you whether he is seeing in lvi or he is seeing a invasive a component so all these things should be mentioned in the report should be mentioned while discussing with the surgeon so this as i was discussing this was a shaved margin where we got an lvi but this is negative lcis on the inked margin is also considered negative so only dcis and idc on the margin is considered on the inked margin is positive if it is away from the inked margin or it was less than 1 mm on uh, from the inked margin but not in the inked margin then also it is considered free so this is a lumpectomy specimen you can see this is the orientation which are long lateral short superior and this is a base so usually we take for bcs we take radial margins that is perpendicular margins to the tumor this is a tumor you can see this is a tumor here this is a tumor and this is a perpendicular margin from the tumor to the inked periphery we discourage taking the shaved margin because suppose the tumor is very close because nowadays it is on the inked margin so while cutting also you can lose about 1 to 2 mm tissue so falsely you will be telling that a shaved margin is positive and also on shaved margin we cannot give the distance of the tumor from the uh, margin so we discourage shaved tumor for bcs but suppose you get a large Uh, lumpectomy where the tumor is very far more than 5 cm or more then if you want you can give a shaved margin but always it is desired to give a radial margin so lumpectomy margins are all painted all the six margins this is lateral medial superior inferior base and anterior we cut the lumpectomy in bread loaf slice in 3 uh, in 5 to 1 mm thickness so that we don't miss even a small tumor how we cut depends on the pathologist opinion 
mostly preferred is longer to um, longest dimension suppose if your medial to lateral is longest dimension then we will cut from medial to lateral or lateral to medial or if your superior to inferior is showing you uh, longest dimension then you will cut it superior to inferior so it is on the pathologist discretion how to do the bread slices so here on the bread loafing you can see the here is the tumor which is close to base but about 2 mm so it is not positive so i say because we are taking uh, we have done bread uh, loaf of this lump, breast lumpectomy and this other su orientation sutures we are giving radial margins so you can see from the tumor i can measure the base i can measure anterior margin tumor to the superior margin can be assessed and told to the surgeon tumor with the inferior margin can be assessed and told tumor with lateral and tumor from medial so all the margins can be assessed and correctly told to the surgeon here it was close it was about 2 mm but because we have given radial margin so we could tell the surgeon okay this is close but this is about 2 mm so after that it is the surgeon's discretion whether he wants to revise or he can let it go because it is not beyond this ink so it is negative so this helps the radial margin helps us to tell how much close the tumor is from the inked margins so this is how we go about it we take all the six margins this is a perpendicular margin as i was telling you helps us to determine if the margin is positive or negative but also importantly it helps us to give the clearance of the tumor from the margin so here this is a tumor this is the lateral margin this was the uh, the same sample on permanent i'm showing you so here we can see the margin status this was a case where margin was positive and we have told you can see the tumor up to the cotrite right, uh, painted cotrite margin you can see here also dci is up to the cotrite margin so here this is a ink the distance between the dci and the ink part is about 2 mm so these margins are negative you can see dci here coming to the cotrite but it is more than 2 mm so these margins are all negative abutting so this is how we assess the lumpectomy specimens those are often irregular ill defined boundaries we see and um, grossly only we will uh, dissect and tell the surgeon prior that this margin looks close so you can take a call and you can revise the margin if you want so these are some of the additional um, benefits when we uh, you know routinely do the grossing meticulously so before the microscopic section comes we can tell okay this margin appears close so if the surgeon wants he can plan for a revision so additional uses of frozen section is uh, for git cases it many a times helps us to establish a primary diagnosis also it helps us to give the evaluation on the resection margins in the setting of uh, carcinoma of the uh, colon frozen section is used in many pediatric cases like hirschsprung's disease which relies heavily on the pathologist to identify the a ganglionosis ganglionosis segment part of the rectum so that helps us to optimize the extent of the resection so that is very useful uh, for the pediatric surgeons now what are the pitfalls we cannot do a cytology evaluation on frozen section very small tissue can be lost while handling so that uh, is difficult to uh, handle during uh, doing frozen melanocytic tumors or melanomas or melanoma in situ is very difficult and it is discouraged it cannot be done uh, on frozen section because you have to uh, comment on junctional activity which we cannot do on frozen section epidermal margins of melanocytic lesions also cannot be performed on frozen section it should not be in, uh, done bone cannot be sectioned on the cryostat because those are hard 
tissue so it should be uh, like we cannot do bone uh, only margins for frozen section adipose tissue as i was telling it is very problematic it used to cause lot of uh, uh, false uh, like no positive because suppose the tumor is very close in a bcs but uh, actually it is it may be 2 mm but because the fat used to fold on itself and if you uh, feel the consistency fat will be soft the tumor will be hard because of dysplastic reaction so what happens the soft fat tissue used to fold on itself and it used to give a false positive because actually there was a 2 mm but because of shearing because of folding on itself the 2 mm was seen as a thin rimming or it could have folded on the tumor itself or it would have been torn so falsely would have told that margin is positive so that is some of the difficulties some problematic issues which uh, are seen in frozen section but that with the new equipments it has been uh, like not taken care of and uh, changing the temp which cutting temperature as i was telling which we can improve uh, which we can increase can help in sectioning the fatty tissues now some of the pitfalls i am just showing you if the tissue is fatty and you have some of this large cells which are atypical it is very uh, and also we have this inflammatory cells at the um, scattered so in this cases because the tissue is less it becomes very difficult to give a correct diagnosis also if the tumor tissue comes with extensive necrosis here you see very less uh, is viable tumor this is all areas of necrosis and edema this also prevents from giving a correct diagnosis sometimes reports have to be deferred frozen section is highly accurate technique but sometimes a report needs to be deferred because of there can be sampling uh, like no uh, problem because it can be very small tissue which will uh, require deferring of the uh, diagnosis sometimes for low grade sarcoma soft tissue lesions that becomes very difficult to diagnose on ihc because you need uh, on frozen section because you need permanent section with ihc so to subtype these um, neoplasms so it is uh, better we defer and we tell okay it is a uh, spindle cell neoplasm it could be low grade but we will do permanent section with ihc and give the report later for lymphoid lesions it could be a um, proliferative germinal center it could be lymphoma so uh, because uh, lymphomas are always uh, like no helped in the diagnosis with ihc on the permanent section so that we can refrain we can we can tell okay i am seeing a uh, lymphoid enlargement with atypical cells i am there is loss of germinal center there is effacement of the uh, lymph nodal structure this can be a lymphoma but on permanent we will defer for permanent section we will do ihc and then give the definite opinion then for thyroid lesions suppose if it is a uh, follicular lesion of the thyroid for thyroid we have to see look out for vascular invasion and capsular invasion so the entire capsule of the nodule of the lesion has to be embedded so we can just tell it is a follicular neoplasm defer for permanent section and we have to look out for the entire capsular and vascular invasion now quality assurance is required as in any other process for giving a correct report where uh, assured report that is we need to record all the frozen section on the glass slide on the request form we have to know whether it is from the same patient we properly number it on the block on the request form and also on the uh, while placing it on the cryostat we have to position it properly so that there is no mistake from uh, pre analytical procedure the frozen section it is rapid and diagnostically accurate technique use of inoperative uh, intraoperative uh, consultation is it has evolved over the time from it in uh, itself and this report has to be having a quality check what is that that is uh, laid down by caps that the staining quality should be adequate reagent changes to be maintained and documented 
identification of the process and also the multiple sections has to be done that also documented how many sections are taken as a protocol frozen section block often needs to be removed from the cutting area in the course of frozen section hence the block needs to be labeled and kept separately with the same patient it should not be mixed up because there can be two three patient samples coming up at the same time so this has to be thoroughly maintained now what additional we can benefit from frozen section is we can give this tissue this um, fresh tissue for ngs sampling for ngs dna for cytogenetics for flow cytometry for molecular microbiology for um, osna and also for biobanking so this is additional benefit which can uh, like you know which helps us to preserve more tissue this is one uh, case i just put it for our reference see on the frozen section everything looks atypical everything looks very big this is the uh, inherent demerit of the process because when we freeze it because of cryofixation the cell swells up so faultily it looks like atypical but this is uh, a fibroblastic proliferation with edema so this should not be taken as a uh, malignancy as a uh, you know sarcoma so experience and doing meticulous uh, sectioning helps us for coming to a adequate and proper diagnosis which helps the surgeon to take a call what should be the uh, treatment because every procedure every protocol which we do or which we practice is ultimately is a team work which should help the patient so with this i think uh, we as pathologists should tell the surgeon we should have a very good communication and rapport with the surgeon which will help us to you know give a correct opinion and come to a consensus which would benefit both the surgeon and the patient from our findings thank you So I can uh, take any questions if it is uh, if there are some questions. Yes, ma'am, in the chat box. so um, there is a question uh, from dipanjan that trimming of fat done by visualization or do we have any solution for fat uh, dis uh, dissolvement no it is uh, it is a frozen section it is fresh tissue so we cannot we do not use any uh, fat uh, dissolving solution we have to we have to palpate for the lymph nodes or for the lesion and the lesion or the node will be firm on consistency that we uh that is with experience we come to know and surrounding that lesion we have to trim the fat so there is no solution for uh, trimming the fat then there is for frozen section what is the thickness we make the sections so we take the sections for uh, freezing which is about 1 into 1 <coughs> cm and the uh, width is about 2 mm and when we cut it on the freezing uh, like cryostat depending on the tissue the microns vary if it is lymph node as it is very cellular we will cut it at about 2 to 3 microns if it is fat for bcs margins preferred uh, is about 4 to 6 microns thickness of the sections how much time does it take for frozen section from receiving of the specimen to reporting so usually it is 20 minutes depending on the number of specimen so each sample it should be 20 minutes from receiving in the lab 
how to do intraoperative margin slash marrow by um, so uh, in our um, center we used to get this uh, margin for bone marrow uh, for sarcoma or it is to scoop and send the marrow component not the bone part so the marrow component of the bone will be soft so that we could that we can give but not the bone Uh, imprint cytology, yes, I uh, forgot to, uh, like I didn't uh, tell about this. For lymph nodes, uh, when we uh, get the lymph nodes for doing frozen section or our uh, assessment for the nodes, we do imprint smears. We cut the node and then we do imprint on the slide and then uh, we assess it under microscope. That do help us on lymphoma diagnosis. Uh, is there any tissue type which you require in some special media? No, we we prefer tissue to be sent as uh, fresh. No need for adding any media because you are doing it in house. It is coming from your uh, operation theater, so it reaches you within um, uh, five to ten minutes itself. So we want it without any media fresh because if you are adding normal saline that uh, causes water of crystallines uh, crystallization so that can cause uh, you know this uh, marks uh, and uh, water of crystallization hampers in the uh, freezing and uh, that does not give a uniform homogeneous uh, section so we discourage sending in any media <coughs> does the time taken for frozen section reporting depend on the size of the specimen sent yes yeah, suppose if it is a large tumor and you have a heterogeneous uh, pattern on macroscopy. Suppose some areas are necrotic, some are solid, some are cystic. So we have to sample more. So every sections which we are doing, it takes about um, 10 to 15 minutes for uh, it cutting and staining and uh, like, no, presenting to the pathologist. So if the tumor size is very big, then obviously it takes some more time. Mostly, but we give the report within 20 to 30 minutes. Sometimes frozen is given as suspicious for malignancy. Is it good for pathologist to predict as suspicious? Uh, see, uh, pathologist is seeing only a small piece of tissue. So our diagnosis depends on our communication with the surgeon. It The surgeon always guides you. It depends on how well, the patient has been worked up and it depends on the surgical oncology. I, uh, because we have the privilege of working with one of the best surgeons. So, sir, always he is our guiding. You can you can tell he is our pole star. Like, no, sir will tell us, okay, this is a uh, probable diagnosis or you can look into that. So, that helps us in our uh, reporting of frozen section. So, before telling it suspicious and all. Uh, I think with it is your, you know, how the surgeon uh, briefs you with all the added information. That helps to tell you whether to give a more confirmation, uh, confirm, confirmative diagnosis. So for suspicious, that can be only when it is, you know, um, um, maybe a sarcoma or a very small tissue. Where it is better we defer, we will not be able to tell. <coughs> Uh, frozen section, does it hamper the final histopathology report on the same section specimen? Yes, it does hamper because uh, on, when we cryofix uh, the tissue for frozen section, the morphology gets you know, uh, distorted. So uh, it really um, will be difficult on um, to give the final histopathology report on the frozen section. Because many a times when you need to create a tumor before mitosis, then on the same cryopreserved tissue, because the uh, tissue will be uh, little distorted, to count the mitosis will not be possible, maybe may not be accurate. And because it is cryopreserved, we may lose, a, a loss antigenicity also. So even doing an IHC uh, for KI or uh, P53, which can help to assess the proliferative markers, may not be possible because we lose, uh, you know, antigenicity while we do cryopreserve. So it may become difficult to uh, give 
a final histopathology report on the same specimen. But if we don't have any more specimen, we have to give on the same, but we have to communicate before releasing the report to the surgeon. Ma'am, not all specimens are assessed by imprint cytology. Yes, only lymph nodes we assess by imprint cytology, not all. Only uh, it is mostly uh, like useful for uh, lymph, uh, lymphoma uh, diagnosis. Can be predicted as borderline tumor or malignant tumor of ovary unfrozen. Yes, we routinely do that. Uh, it uh, uh, borderline tumor and malignant uh, ovary and tumor can be given on frozen section uh, definitely because you have to look out for stromal invasion. So uh, on frozen section, we can uh, opine on whether it is borderline or invasive uh, ovary and carcinoma or not. Uh, what is the accuracy of frozen section? See, it always depends on the expertise of the patholo histopathology uh, team or the pathologist and how much frozen section the pathologist has worked on in the entire, uh, you know, um, training or entire, um, uh, like, you know, years of reporting. So in our uh, center, the accuracy of frozen section is very high because we do frozen section daily in most of the uh, surgical onco cases when it, where it is required. So uh, in our, it is more than uh, uh, 98 to 99% uh, accuracy. What is the false negative rate of frozen section reporting? False negative uh, rate is also low, I think. It is about, uh, I think, uh, less than 3%, less than 2%. Is there any shrinkage on tissue section on the frozen? No, we don't. It is uh, like we uh, do not use any uh, preservative. No, when the tissue does not uh, undergo any um, cycles of process through formalin or alcohol or um, acetone. So there is no tissue the shrinkage on frozen section. It is just we take the fresh tissue and we cryopreserve. So there is no tissue shrinkage. But there is tissue loss due to cutting the sections. <clears throat> Can final histopathology report differ uh, from frozen section report? Uh, the final histologic, uh, histopathology report is nearly same. It depends on what case you're talking about. If it is for diagnostic, suppose if you have seen a tuberculosis on a, a peritoneal nodule, it will be the same on uh, permanent also. Suppose if you have a metastatic deposit, that will also uh, be given as same because you will be assessing it on the permanent section. It is same uh, report only, where, the, where only the microscopy becomes more descriptive. But suppose when it is for staging, suppose endometrial uh, carcinoma cases, when you get a THPSO, then you will be only seeing the uh, nodes, status on the frozen, and you will be commenting on the myometrial invasion on the frozen section. So uh, your permanent will be consisting on the frozen report, which will be given in the same report. So you first state the frozen section report, and then you compile the entire report with the TNM staging, that entire tumor type, tumor size, depth of invasion, myometrial invasion with the percentage, then the node uh, status, your LVI, all this together with the TNM, with the uh, PTNM is incorporated in the same report. So then the report becomes more, uh, you know, more um, like, uh, um, like according to like caps where you have uh, commented on each uh, um, part of the tumor. So it is uh, well compiled in that permanent sections reports. Frozen section in mucinous ovarian tumor. So frozen section in mucinous ovarian tumor itself is, uh, you know, is a uh, topic to discuss by itself. See, frozen section for ovarian mucinous tumor, uh, we need to discuss with the patholo uh, with the surgeon at the same time 
um, while he is doing uh, the exploration because mucinous ovarian tumors are very rare so first we have to know whether it is uh, involving both the ovaries or and then also ask the surgeon whether there is any lesion in the appendix whether there is lesion in the upper gi and whether um, there is any lesion in the pancreatic or biliary um, area so first we have to exclude whether there is any 